Hi everyone, welcome back to the Heterogeneous Parallel Programming class. We are at lecture 4.2. In this lecture, we will be developing a basic reduction kernel. The objective of this lecture is for you to learn how to write a basic reduction kernel. And uh, we're going to go through thread to index mapping, and also we're going to begin to, uh, to go into the concept of turning off threads and control divergence uh, in the kernel. So here is an uh, outline of the parallel uh, reduction kernel. And um, uh, we're going to essentially start with a full set of threads in a, uh, in a thread block. And then we will recursively have the number of threads in each step. And in every step, the active threads will be adding two values in each, uh, to uh, together. And um, this will uh, take log n steps for n elements. And um, uh, some of the threads will be turned off, and some of the threads will take, uh, one of the threads will actually take all the log n steps. But some of the step, uh, threads will be taking fewer steps before they drop out. And so we will assume a in-place uh, reduction using shear memory. That is, the original vector is in the device global memory. And then uh, all the threads will collaborate to load a section of the, uh, these elements into the shear memory. And then uh, we would uh, use the shear memory as a uh, partial sum vector. And uh, every step, we will bring the partial sum vector closer to the sum. The final sum will be in element zero of the shear memory array. And then uh, we, we, this will reduce the global memory traffic because during the, uh, the entire kernel execution, once we loaded the um, elements into the shared memory, all the reads and writes of the partial sums in the reduction tree will be done in the shared memory, and we will not be accessing global memory. So this is how we reduce the global memory traffic. And the thread block size is limited, um, limits the n of the section to be less than or equal to 2048 because we can up, have up to 1024 threads and um, uh, we're going to be able to, uh, to process twice the uh, number of elements with this simple kernel design. So here we show the, uh, a simple example of uh, parallel sum reduction uh, based on our kernel design. So uh, we, here we show eight elements. It's a very small example. And then uh, we show that uh, we, we will be using four threads to process the eight elements. And uh, all the threads are going to be assigned to a particular uh, data location. This is the beginning of the thread to data index mapping. And um, all the threads are going to be essentially uh, uh, positioned at a even uh, uh, data location. So thread zero is going to be uh, positioned at uh, data element zero, and uh, thread one is going to be positioned at element two. Thread two is going to be uh, positioned at element three, uh, uh, element one, and uh, two, element four, and then thread three is going to be positioned at uh, element six. So uh, essentially, if you multiply the thread index by two, uh, you will get the particular position that they're responsible for uh, in the design. And here we show the, uh, the, the steps. In the first step, all the four threads will participate, and they, each of them will be adding two numbers together to form the, uh, the first partial uh, sum for, uh, for the uh, data. So this produces four um, partial sum elements. And uh, we, write, we overwrite the shared memory array, because once we have the partial sum, we no longer need to look at the original data elements. So the even positions of the uh, shared memory array is going to be overwritten by the partial sum. And then the second, uh, during the second step, we have the number of threads. So only thread 0 and thread 2 will be active in this point. And we are going to um, have each of them to add two of the partial sum numbers together, and this is, gives us the 11 and 14. Now, uh, for the final step, only thread 0 will be active, and it will be adding uh, 11 and 14 and right into um, the location 0. So uh, this 
shows that uh, in, at the end of the kernel execution, the, uh, the final sum of the entire section is going to be in location zero of the shared memory array. So just to summarize, um, we were, uh, each thread is going to be responsible for an even index location of the partial sum vector. And after each step, half of the threads are no longer needed. So we'll turn off uh, half of the threads after each step. And one of the inputs is always from the location of the responsibility. As we have seen, every time a thread is active, one of its inputs is always from the, uh, the location that it is responsible for. And then uh, let's say in step two, uh, thread zero and thread two are active, and their, one of their inputs is uh, from the location that uh, it, uh, they're responsible for, which is uh, location zero and location two. Um, so uh, location four, actually. So um, the, the, in the end, we have uh, the last step, thread zero, also has one of its inputs from location zero. So uh, this gives us that, uh, this illustrates that su summary. And one of the, in, uh, in each step, one of the inputs come from an in increasing distance away location. So th if we go back to the previous um, slide here, we see that one of the inputs of thread zero comes from the uh, neighbor location, and then the, in the next step, it comes from two locations away. In the next step, it comes from four locations away. So uh, all these will be taken into consideration uh, as a factor when we uh, write out the kernel code. So now uh, we can, uh, we're ready to write that uh, simple uh, reduction kernel. And um, uh, we're going to do a very simple thread block design. Every thread block will take uh, two times block dim number of input elements. Remember, uh, you know what, uh, we, each thread will initially process two elements. So that's why we only need to have, um, you know, we can process two times the number of threads of elements in each thread block. And each thread will load two, two elements into the shared memory so that we can begin that process. So um, this is the, uh, the declaration of the shared memory array, and uh, it needs to be twice the block size. And um, then uh, this is just a shorthand here, T, uh, for the thread idx.x. And then uh, the starting location for the entire thread block is going to be uh, two times the block idx.x. So it figures out which uh, block uh, index that uh, the current block has. And all the previous, every previous thread block is going to cover two times block dim dot x number of elements. So we need to use, we use this expression to skip over all the elements that are uh, covered by the previous uh, thread blocks. And once we, uh, we establish the starting location, we, uh, we have two load uh, statements for each thread. And uh, one is to load the star location plus the thread index. So this is essentially all the threads in the thread block will collaborate and load the first half of the section being covered. And then uh, we will uh, uh, have all the threads to collaborate, but all their indices will be at, will, uh, will be uh, in, uh, increased by block dim dot x so that everyone will, will move to the second half of the section being covered and all the threads will collaborate and load these consecutive uh, elements into the shared memory. So after these two statements, we will have the, in, um, uh, all the, uh, in the entire section of data elements in the shared memory. So now we can begin the actual reduction process. So um, we're going to, uh, to, to have a, ver a variable called stride. Uh, remember that um, uh, in every step, one of the input elements is going to be coming from an increasing distance away. And it's uh, start as one, and it will be two, four, eight, and so on. So we start that stride variable as, uh, with value one. And then uh, we, we detect whether the stride is going to be um, the same, uh, reach the value of blocked in, because this is the farthest away that a addition needs to add. 
so if we have stride equal to block dim, that means that we are at the very end of the reduction, and thread zero is going to be just adding elements, uh, the partial sum in element zero, and the partial sum in the um, in the uh, block dim uh, location of the dim dot x location in the shared memory. So we're adding that those two final uh, partial sums together to get the real final value. So whenever stride has reached block dim dot x, we know that uh, that was the very last step of this whole uh, whole iteration, and uh, stride will be increased by two times uh, every time. So this is just to uh, to to uh, multiply the stride by two and update that stride value every iteration. So when we come into the loop, we first do a uh, the barrier synchronization, and then we do a test whether the thread ID of the current thread uh, is a uh, perfect multiple of stride. So if we do a uh, modulo of that stride variable and the, uh, the result is zero, that means that the thread index is a perfect multiple of the stride value. So during the first iteration, uh, the stride is one, so all the threads will be a perfect multiple of one, so all the threads will participate. And the, then the next iteration, um, the stride value will be two, so only the even threads will pass this test. And the next one stride will be four, and only the, multiple, the threat indices that are multiples of fours will participate. Everyone else will be turned off because there's no uh, else statement here, so everyone else will be turned off. And um, uh, so for all the active threads, it's going to take the uh, location that it's responsible for, which is two times the threat index. And then um, one of the in inputs will come from that stride distance away, as we mentioned before. And we accumulate that into the location that is responsible for. So in every iteration, we're going to be updating the partial sum of the threads that are active. So um, now here is a, a question for you. Why do we need to have the sync thread? Um, why do we need to do the barrier uh, uh, synchronization at the beginning of the loop body? Now that you have time to think about it a little bit, the sync threads serve in the two purposes. But in summary, it actually uh, just to ensure that all the elements in each version of the partial sum have been generated before we proceed to the next step. If we go back to the um, to the picture here, at in every iteration at the beginning of the loop, remember we have the threads to collaborate and load all these elements. So before we do that first iteration, we have a sync thread uh, right after we get into the loop to make sure that all the loads have completed so that all the elements are, are, are available for the addition operation. But a more subtle point is that after every iteration, when we go back to the beginning of the loop, we also need to make sure that the previous, uh, all the threads have finished their previous iteration so that uh, we will be able to have the up-to-date partial sum values in order to uh, do the current, uh, the next iteration properly. So for example, before we go into iteration two, we need to make sure that all the, uh, all the threads in iteration one have properly produced the results for that iteration because iteration two requires the results generated by uh, thread zero and thread one. Uh, when th uh, thread zero will need to have the result generated by itself and thread one. So even though the result generated by itself will definitely be there because otherwise that this thread would not have gone to the second iteration, but it also needs to make sure that thread one has also completed its mission in generating that number seven. So a simple way is to do a barrier synchronization and make sure that all the threads have completed their mission in the, uh, in the previous iteration before any of the threads start the next iteration. Obviously, this is a over uh, conservative or, or, or over synchronization in the sense that uh, each thread only needs to wait for its supplier, meaning itself and uh, the thread that is stride distance away to finish. However, uh, the barrier synchronization provides a very simple and conservative way to, uh, to perform that, uh, uh, to, to uh, serve that purpose.
So now we have now that we finished that loop, uh, we are uh, pretty much done with the kernel. So uh, if we go back to the global picture, remember each uh, thread block is going to be processing a section of the original data. So at the end of the kernel, thread zero in each thread block has the final sum in the uh, uh, in, in its responsible location. So this thread zero can just go and write uh, the partial sum zero location into a vector indexed by block idx.x. That is, each thread block will be writing a partial, its, uh, the sum of its section into a result vector. So uh, that's why we use the, uh, the block I, I index to index into that result vector. So after this step, um, after all the, the thread blocks complete, then we have a vector of uh, elements, and each element is the part, is the sum of one section of the original data. And there can be a large number of such sums in the original, uh, you know, if the original data vector is very large. So um, the uh, so what what we can do is uh, we can either have the host code to just iterate through this uh, this result vector and then uh, produce the final sum if that uh, if the number of uh, result uh, elements in the vector is relatively small however if the original data is big enough we can end up with a large number of elements in this result uh, vector as well so we could have the uh, host code to iteratively launch another reduction kernel on this uh, result uh, vector so that the result vector will be further reduced uh, to a, uh, a one or a smaller number of uh, output vectors. So uh, so uh, we can do this approach iteratively until we finally get one uh, uh, one to the final re uh, answer. So um, this gives us the overall design of uh, your uh, simple reduction kernel. So um, at this point, um, we have the uh, ability to write a simple kernel, and I would like to encourage you to do so. But uh, your uh, lab assignment is actually going to be based on a better designed uh, kernel that does the same uh, work. And um, uh, we will uh, be talking about that particular design in the next lecture. So uh, if you're interested in learning more about reduction and um, uh, work uh, efficiency and resource efficiency analysis and uh, the uh, specifics about the kernel, uh, this uh, simple kernel design, I'd like to encourage you to read the uh, section 6.1 of the textbook. Thank you.